Butcher area bank of T. Butcher area bank of T causes bank of T and filariasis or elephantiasis. It is the most common and widespread species among the filarial worms infecting human beings. History Butcherer Bancroft is known since antiquity. Butcherer and Bancroft scientists they worked on this organism and so it is named Butcherer Bancroft after their names. Habitat The adult worms live in lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels of human only. There is no animal reservoir and it is not a zoonotic disease. Morphology of the adult worms They are long hair like, transparent, and filariform in shape. Both the ends of the worms are tapering. They live for about 10 to 15 years or more and the male and female worms they are coiled together in the abdominal and inguinal lymphatics and in testicular tissues. The male worms are 2 to 4 cm long. The tail end is curved ventrally and has two spicules. Um, the female worms is 8 to 10 cm long. The tail end is narrow and abruptly pointed. The females lay egg actively motile. The females lay actively motile embryos which are uh, known as the microfilaria and the females are oviviparous. Microfilaria are the larval forms of filarial worms which are released for, uh, by fertilization and microfilaria of different filarial worms they vary in the distribution of nuclei, the presence of sheath and the presence of specialized cells etc. Uh, in different species there are different features in the microfilaria which help in identifying the species. The microfilaria of Vocheraria bancrofti, they move from the lymph nodes via lymphatic trunks to the circulatory system. They have a hyaline sheath about 300 micrometer long, the nuclei from the head to tail end. They have a nerve ring, anterior V-spot, posterior V-spot. There are four genital cells, G1 to G4 and a central body of Manson. There are two hosts in Butcherera bancrofti infection. The definitive host is man and intermediate host is vector. The vectors could be Culex, Aries or Anopheles mosquitoes. In man, man being the definitive host, the adult worms live in the lymphatics and lymph glands. The male and female worms, they remain coiled together. Female lay X embryos. The em embryos are known as microfilaria. The microfilaria go via lymphatics to the bloodstream and there is no metamorphosis here. Nocturnal periodicity. The microfilaria of Vucherer bancrofti they take rest in the capillaries of lungs, kidneys, heart and big arteries during the daytime and they invade the peripheral circulation at night time and uh, when the mind biting mosquitoes are active at 10, 10 pm to 4 am. And some sub periodic and non periodic variants are also seen. In the intermediate host, the life cycle lasts for about 11 to 14 days. The sheathed microfilaria in the circulation of the man, they are ingested by the mosquito during the blood meal and greater than 15 microfilaria per drop of blood is infective for the mosquito. They cast off their sheath in the stomach of the mosquito in about 15 to 30 minutes. They penetrate the stomach wall and in an hour or two reach the thoracic muscles and mold into first degree, second degree and then third degree or filariform larva which is about 1500 to 2000 micrometer long. The third stage of filariform larva is the infective form for man. Microfilaria do not multiply in the mosquito. One microfilaria is equal to one infective larva only. The infective larvae are injected into the man by the mosquito during the blood meal. This is the life cycle. Some portion of the life cycle exists in the man and some portion in the vector which could be Culex, Culex Aries or Anopheles mosquito. Infection of man in the infected Culex mosquito bites man. The filariform larva injected into the bloodstream goes to the lymphatics and lymph nodes and the adult worms lives there, uh, develops into adult worms in about 5 to 18 months. What is biological incubation period and what is clinical incubation period? The biological incubation period or the pre-patent period is about 8 to 12 months long. Entry of larva to the development into the adult worms is known as biological incubation period and the period from 8 to 16 months that is entry of the larva to the starting of symptoms is known as clinical incubation period. Pathogenicity and clinical features. It causes vocheriasis or bancroftian filariasis or lymphatic filariasis. It causes inflammatory damage to the lymphatics by the adult worms. And clinically, the lymphatic filariasis could be acute or chronic and it can also lead to occult filariasis. 
lymphatic filariasis or classical filariasis in this case dilatation of lymph vessels takes place the inflammatory reaction provoked by the adult worms developing larvae metabolic products released during the molting and immune reaction of host are responsible for dilatation of the lymphatic vessels infection of the lymph vessels that is lymphangitis the dilated inflamed and thick lymph vessels associated with edema erythema and tenderness are there dilatation of lymphatics also leads to lymphedema and thickening of endothelium there could also be obstruction to the lymph nodes there is fibrotic degenerative changes in the lymphatic vessels proximal to the lymph nodes lymph node also shows sclerosis and obstruction to the lymphatic channels clinical manifestations of filariasis acute filariasis may filarial fever lymphoedema due to the presence of adult worms in the lymphatic channels there um, thereby interfering with the flow then lymphadenitis and lymphangitis can occur low grade fever chills generalized malaise and headache can occur and in chronic filariasis it develops after 10 years of infection and during this stage inflammation subsides and fibrosis advances so there are two clinical varieties acute filariasis and chronic filariasis what are lymph varices these are varicose lymph ducts formed due to dilatation of lymph vessels because of the obstruction lymphangiovirasis rupture may lead to chyluria chylothorax chylus ascites and chylus diarrhea obstruction to the lymph vessels of spermatic cord leads to hydrocele what is elephantiasis elephantiasis occurs due to complex immune reaction and repeated super infection in males the arms legs and scrotum are affected in females the arms legs vulva and breast are affected the affected part becomes enormously enlarged and overlying skin becomes thickened fissured and even papillomatous secondary bacterial infection may also occur this is some photograph which shows elephantiasis what is occult filariasis occult filariasis is a condition of hypersensitivity reaction to the filarial antigens macrofilaria are not found in the peripheral blood and other features of filariasis are absent topical pulmonary eosinophilia is most common manifestation and characterized by hyper eosinophilia of peripheral blood and increase in the filarial antibodies along with ige here they have shown the difference between classical filariasis and occult filariasis the classical filariasis occurs because of the adult worms lymph vessels and lymph nodes are affected lymphangitis lymphadenitis occur and microfilaria are present in the blood and demonstration of antibodies is not a diagnostic property while in occult filariasis microfilaria are the causative agent they affect the lymph vessels lungs and liver eosinophilic granuloma and hypersensitivity reaction occur and microfilaria are absent in blood and demonstration of increasing tetra of antibodies is a diagnostic feature in occult filariasis in lab diagnosis demonstration of microfilaria in the peripheral blood time of blood collection for which area microfilaria is 10 pm to 4 am if blood collection is to be done in the day time then uh, provocation test can be used diethyl carbamazine provocation test in which diethyl carbamazine drug is given 100 mg orally and that will stimulate the microfilaria and they will come out in the peripheral circulation and blood can be collected after 30 to 45 minutes after giving diethyl carbamazine site of collection is ear lobes not the fingers as they are present in more in the capillary blood rather than the venous blood these are some photographs which show microfilaria in the peripheral circulation methods of demonstration could be wet mount or stain preparations in wet mount in unstained preparation motile microfilaria can be seen under the low power microscope and in stained preparations thin or thick blood film stained with lichman or lobanus sky stains can be used demonstration of microfilaria in a concentrated blood sample when direct examination is negative and clinical suspicion is strong the blood sample can be concentrated by different methods like lysed capillary blood technique capillary tube centrifugation technique venous blood filtration technique or venous blood tube concentration technique demonstration of microfilaria in the chylus urine exudates of lymphorex hydrocele fluid can be done demonstration of adult worms in the lymph nodes biopsy can be done demonstration of the calcified worm by x-ray can be done demonstration of antibodies using non specific antigens is available passive hemagglutinin assay elisa fluorescent antibody test radio immunoassay these tests are available 
They show cross reactivity and cannot differentiate between the past and present infection. Demonstration of circulating antigen in the serum using ELISA can be done. Um, antigen is present only during the current or recent infection only. Molecular methods like PCR can be used. Skin test positive in infected cases. Zero diagnosis. Demonstration of microfilaria in the stomach blood of mosquito vector which was allowed to bite an infected individual. For treatment, diethyl carbamazine can be used. For prophylaxis, vector control, protective uh, protection against mosquito bite, and treatment of patients and carriers with diethyl carbamazine can be done. This is a photograph which shows filarial worms in the eyes. With this, we end the session. Thank you.